Ladies and gentlemen, from Lubbock, Texas, East Side, Roman 60 Crip, we have O Dog. What up, O Dog? What's up with you, man? Oh, nothing much, man. Thanks for joining the show. Oh, no problem, man. Yeah. No problem. When do you remember the Roland 60s first touching down in Lubbock, Texas? Uh, probably about, I'd say about 87, 88. Okay. Yeah. Okay, were you yeah. there that early? Were, I mean, did yeah, you, I was did, there. Did you join that earlier? When yeah, I was, I was, I was there. I was, I, that's when I first started. Okay. So would you say that you're one of the OGs of Rolling Sixties and Love It? Oh yeah. Okay. I, I I couldn't say that, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well shit. Who were some of the gangs around Lubbock before the Rolling Sixties came along? Did you guys have any little clicks or Yeah, we had little clicks like like we had, you know, the the the, the, the Mexicans they had to they little old Vario East Side and you know, we had our little old clicks. The the Rufus Clan, that's what we was called. You know, it was, it was it was it wasn't really tripping like that. You know what I'm saying? We really wasn't fighting like that. But the the essay they was they was fighting like that. But we wasn't fighting like that. Okay, so it's mainly yeah. a lot of lot of Mexican gangs, a lot of Latino gangs in in that area. It Texas. really not. It, 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 it it's really not not in Lubbock, but you know you got the Vario on it, Benson, and you had the the Vario East Side. Then you had us, you know what I'm saying? They pretty much didn't mess with us. We wasn't really playing it like that. Okay. Yeah. Who from L.A., to your knowledge, brought the Roman 60s there? Melvin Williams. He, uh, he was uh, one of my cousin's dad from Compton. Yeah, yeah. We've heard the name before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so we're talking like 87, 88. It was really going down in in L.A. during that time, as you know. Murder, murder rate was through the roof. Was it was it popping like that, really crazy, just out the gate in, in 87, 88, like it was out here? Right right out the gate, we, uh, Lubbock was number three in the nation. <laughs> really? No shit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Damn, at one point they were in the top ten uh, uh, murder capitals of the world? Or the country? Yeah. The country, I mean? Yeah, num okay. number three. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Wow, okay. Interesting, huh? So <clears throat> talk to me about, or uh, maybe this didn't happen, but did you get jumped in, or how was the initiation process? Uh, yeah, you, you you had to get jumped in. You had to get jumped in. Okay. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you fought back, that they showed you had heart. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, you just had to go at it. Mm -hmm. you, just had to, you just had to try what you work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You didn't have to go... Uh, Drive by shooting and kill innocent people like that. Nah, we do nothing like that. Nah, we do, we do nothing like that. Yeah. Take me back to to your, that day. Your experiment. That's a, bit, that's a big day in your life. You getting jumped in. Take me back to just the starting and and the beginning of it. Well, you know, I had a I had a I had a dad that was always constantly on me, man. You know what I'm saying? But I never did have no mom. Mm -hmm. Most 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 people they you know they have vice versa, but you know. Joining the crypt thing, that was, that was like, uh, how would you say, like, like, a different kind of family, a different kind of family aspect. We looked out for each other, you know what I'm saying? I mean, as soon as I got jumped in, and, and everything was everything, it's like they fed me, clothed me, gave me shoes, you know, stuff like that. You know, it was it was very interesting as as a, as a young kid. Now I wouldn't say this day and age. I would tell my kids to be a crip. No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't mm -hmm. tell my kids that. No. Yeah, fair enough. Now, talk to me about how you remember the names of or the legend of the Tookie Williamses and the Raymond Washingtons. Did you guys hear about them in Lubbock? Did you know anything about them? Yeah, the we, yeah, we we heard about them. We heard about them. You know, uh, you know, Tookie was a uh, a white lifted dude, you know what I'm saying? Real, real buff kind of, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. One of those, uh, no nonsense, no tolerate nonsense dudes, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. From what, from what we heard, you know what I'm saying? Back then. Mm -hmm. Now that I've done my, you know what I'm saying, my, what, what you call it, uh, homework. Now that I've done my homework, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I know different, you know what I'm saying? 
who are some <clears> of the <throat> other crib sets in Lubbock? Like now, you know, we got who was we got West Side, uh, Rolling Sixties, we got uh, 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 it's a lot of them, but you know what I'm saying? We all, we all, uh, tend to just get we don't fight like the rest of us, like you know what I'm saying? We got a little great vibes up here, you know, okay, Grape Street, yeah, okay, okay. And you said the Crips aren't really beefing because out here, unfortunately, in LA, a lot of them are. No, uh, we one of once down there. You know, once we decided that's what we was gonna be, that's what we protected. You know what I'm saying? That's what we protected. Okay. Who who got there first? Would you say the Crips or the Bloods? The Crips got there first. Okay. The Crips got there first. Yeah. yeah. When do you remember Blood start coming along? Uh, Blood Blood start coming in maybe. I'd say. Six months after the fact. Six months after the fact. Or maybe right after, you okay. know what I'm saying? But it wasn't. We wasn't really beef like that at first. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't really nothing like that at first. You know what I'm saying? But flash, flash was worn. And you disrespecting me this, you disrespecting me that. You know what I'm saying? It was. It was kind of like that. It's not like L.A. and, and Compton where we got Crips in the one neighborhood and Bloods in the other neighborhood. Sometimes. Like the neighborhood I stayed in, which was Parkway, you know what I'm saying? It was a blood territory. So the Crips that was in Parkway was right dead in the heart of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, right dead in the heart of it. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. What would you say the biggest gang in Lubbock is? The biggest gang? Yeah, number-wise. Number-wise, not... I, Roller City script. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes a lot of yeah. sense. Do you guys ride the five and the six down there? You know, the Bloods do the five, the you know, Crips do the six, or would you guys say you're more like an LA type of gang where you don't do that? No, we don't do that. We, you know, we 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 never did the five and the six thing. You know what I'm saying? We we stood for what we stood for. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how that is. We represented what we represented. They disrespected that, then you disrespected the whole nine. Mm. Yeah. Do you guys have folks and GDs and things like that present in uh, Lubbock? No, we don't have we don't have no guys or disciples and folks. Mm. No, we don't have none of them down here. Oh, okay, interesting. What about white yeah. Aryan gangs? Do you guys do they have a big presence down in Texas? No, see the, the, the it's all over Texas, but it's not in Lubbock. But we not finna tolerate that. <laughs> not finna tolerate. We we not finna tolerate a whole bunch of white people thinking they finna do something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Did you ever have to do any prison time? Nah, nah. See, I was one of those kind. I was one of those people. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna do something just to get me time served, or or, or you know what I'm saying? I'm not finna get caught doing nothing. That's that's gonna give me an extended stay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, but yeah, you know, God bless me to, you know, stay free. You know, I, I've been in jail many times, but you know, what I'm saying I, I, I've never been to the penitentiary. Okay. Now, a whole, a whole bunch of my homeboys have. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let's take it back to the '80s. Did crack cocaine have a big effect on Lubbock, like it did in a lot of the other parts of the country? When crack cocaine uh, swept through her, man, it was it was like an epidemic. I mean, people. I mean, you could see skeletal. I mean, you could see skeleton bones. You put it like that. You could see skeleton bones. I mean, it was something that we really wasn't ready for, but we dealt with it anyway. You know what I'm saying? You never, you never ready for that big of a drug to impact that because you don't really know what's going to happen but you got to roll with the punches you got to deal with what you deal with yeah what yeah. was what was the big drug before crack because out in la it was sherm did you guys have a big major drug out there before crack uh, it was still free base uh -huh. and we had we had mollies and you know what i'm saying stuff like they shooting heroin and stuff like that okay yeah yeah heroin yeah. 
heroin has always been around in some form or the other. Now it's just form of op- all these pills these kids are taking and everybody's taking, man. That's that's crazy shit. The kids in these days and ever, man, they don't take time to, to come ask the, the OG to ask us what cripping is about or what blooding is about. They they cripping on what cripping is, you know what I'm saying? They really ain't try to come ask us. They just doing what they want to do, put it like that. They don't want to know no history. They don't want to know nothing. They just want to wear the, they just want to wear the color. Mm. It's sad to say that you, your OG two years older than you is. That's not no OG, but that's the way these kids think. You know what I'm saying? Man, speak on it because we need more people <laughs> like you talking like that. Yeah. Like yeah. you said, these that's why these kids are so crazy nowadays is because their OG is a year and a half older than them and they're they're doing the same damn thing they are. They, they doing the same reckless thing they is. Yeah, but you know, back in your day, there was actually a dude that was 10, 12, 15, 20 years older than you. Yeah. He did all that shit five, 10 times over, and he's yeah. he dropped some game on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, they, you know, they kind of led us to what we was going to do, but we, what we can't do, you know what I'm saying? We wasn't finna shoot up no house with no kids in it. We wasn't finna do none of that, you know what I'm saying? We wasn't finna do none of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So drive bys yeah, aren't, but- aren't too big in, uh, in Lubbock? No, we had drive-bys. Don't get me wrong, we had drive-bys. Uh-huh. But we made sure that it, you know what I'm saying, wasn't too many kids involved. Now, some innocent kids that got hit. But it, it, it ain't like major cities, you know what I'm saying, where the kids are just falling out the sky. Mm. Because we were kids ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the name Nipsey Hussle, obviously. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. What are your general thoughts on the whole situation and how something like that could have been prevented, meaning, you know, his one of his people from his hood got that close to him and was able to touch him like that. What are your thoughts on the whole general situation? Man, it, it goes back to what I just said, man. The young folks, man, they, they, they do what they want to do, man. You know, I believe that it was the younger crip people that get they got to him. I don't I don't I don't believe it was anybody that was old that knew Nip anything like that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause what we try to do is try to do we try to live better for our lives. You know, once we have kids we kinda look at it a little bit different than mm-hmm. what we did when we went and had no kids. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, the whole situation was just man, messed up. What are your thoughts in general on the rapper Takashi Six Nine. I'm sure you're familiar with the name. Are you familiar with the story? No, I'm familiar with that. Oh, no, okay. So Takashi Six Nine, this little rainbow-haired kid with rainbow teeth. He was a rapper. He uh, lined himself with the New York Bloods after he became famous. Long story short, he was witness to a lot of crimes. He was witness to a lot of stuff, and he was involved in a lot of stuff. And he ended up snitching. Uh, a lot of his boys did 14, 15, 20, 30 years, and he is getting out, I believe, in July. Does that story ring a bell, or you don't even? Uh, yeah, it, it kind of, it kind of rings a bell. Yeah, it kind of rings a bell. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just from yeah. what I told you yeah. about that, and he was, he was pretty yeah. much the biggest rapper in the world for like six months. No joke. He was the biggest, yeah. biggest yeah. rapper. No, you're talking about. Uh, what are your thoughts on that whole general situation, especially that you don't know about it? I'm even more curious to know your thoughts that you're not that in tune with it. In general, what do you, what are your thoughts? I, I I think that he got to protect himself now. You know what I'm saying? By him, by him. Once you snitch, you're always going to have that jacket on you, man. Mm-hmm. No matter how old you get. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you either there or you're going to have to locate to something different. But you being a star you is, everybody's going to know who you are. So, I mean, you really have to protect yourself. Yeah. Because to... somebody, somebody's going to get at him. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to get at him. Yeah. Talk about the G code. Explain the G code and is it dead? I feel like I don't. Once again, I don't know if you're keeping in tune with a lot of things that are going on, but there's a lot of telling and snitching out there. Yeah, uh, it, it, the number one rule in the game is, 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 is you don't tell. You take the ref for what it is, no matter what it is. You know what I'm saying? You you lay it down for what you lay it down for. You don't you don't tell nothing. But a lot of these like 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 these days right now. They don't, they scared of the penitentiary. And they never seen it. But they scared of it and they going to tell it. They going to sign statements and they going to tell it. It's just the way it is. With these young dudes, they, they don't, they just not called snitching no more. It's called getting down. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get you before you get me. That's what 
it is now. That's what I believe. It's called getting down. You know, now, me and you, we in a car together, and, and, and you drop your little low sack right there, I know that you're going to be mad enough to accept that. You know what I'm saying? I should have no parts of that. But at the same time, while both of us should get charged for what you had. Now, if it was mine, I'm going to, I'm going to tell him right now, say, that, that was mine. It ain't nothing to do with him. You can let him go. But that, that, that that's mine. It's out of my seat. It's on my side. He didn't know nothing about it. Even if you did it. That's just the way it is. Yeah. That's the G code. Mm -hmm. take, take, take responsibility for what you got and never ever snitch. Period. Yeah. It sounds so simple, but when someone's sitting in that interrogation room and they're facing football numbers, 48 years, 62 years, man, that's that's when that's when you see the real uh, real people right there, right? Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's when you see the, uh, the, what I call, that's when you see the whole come out of my, <laughs> out, of, out of a whole bunch of dudes, you know what I'm saying? That's when you see it. Mm -hmm. But if you know that that wasn't yours, what, what is you going to snitch for? Mm -hmm. If you know that they don't have that on you, what, what is you going to put the blame on somebody for? No matter if, it, if it's in the car or not, if you know that that ain't yours, what you going to get down for? Mm -hmm. But, yeah. This day and age, they, they, they going to get down. Even if it is there, they, they, they still going to be the first one to sign a statement. Yeah. The first one to sign a statement, they're going to be the one to get out. When was. Lubbock, Texas, the most active. Just when you when you looking back now, you're like, damn, it was just so crazy at this time frame. What years are we talking about? Early, we talking about early. I say early nineties, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Early nineties, early to mid nineties, man. Yeah. Same yeah. out here. Same out here in L.A. We had uh, in one year we had upwards of two thousand murders in Los Angeles, homicides, and it was just really going down in L.A. So you're saying the same thing around the early to mid nineties? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I seen a whole bunch of us fall. I seen a whole bunch of them fall. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it seemed like it was more of us falling than it was them. Yeah. But I guess that's because I was on the opposite side of the fence. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a conspiracy theorist or anything, but do you think there is something bigger out there? Meaning, like I don't know, the government maybe pulling some puppet strings to to control what goes on in the hood and to keep. See, I am I am a conspiracy theorist. Oh, talk, please. And and I, I'm gonna tell you something. Everything happens for a reason in that society. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that it's the white folks. What I'm saying is the, 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 the judicial system. Somebody's putting something out there. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't have no cocaine to fly it over here with. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the stuff that you're catching us coming in here with ain't. Big enough to supply the whole city with. You know what I'm saying? But where is it coming from? Where is these guns coming from? They coming from y'all. Pay kick a point case. Uh my brother he just he just did a little a little time, but he got he beat the case, but the gun that he had came at the police lockup. How did that happen? The gun that he bought came out the police lockup. How did that happen? And he bought it from another dude. He bought it from another dude. I'm talking about where you had to sign or to see the weapons and all that. Yeah, that's where it came from. And that's how he got off of that. Damn. Yeah. Wow. You know, Texas has always had a reputation of being able to carry wherever you go walk around in the wall yeah. california yeah, laws can't, can't, can't. yeah california <laughs> laws are so strict i mean new york laws are even stricter you can't even i can't shoot somebody in my front yard out of protection you know without you know having to go to to go to court and defend myself but talk about how uh, how easy it is to get a gun and does that have any effect on the hood um you know Man, it's, 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 it's easy to buy a gun it is to buy a pack of cigarettes it's crazy to me, man. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying, yeah, if you yeah. want that, if you want it, you gonna go get it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just, it, it, I'm talking about early age, okay? Yeah, now we're talking legal, uh, legal guns. Cause yeah, I know we can get illegal guns easy. I can go down the street and get throw a rock and get five, but we're talking legal guns, right? I'm talking about both. Okay, okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. But it's so many of us, this is the way they did us, man. It's so many of us that, that uh that went through the court system and and uh plead out and felonies and everything. So that's what we have to get. We have to get those dirty guns. You know what I'm saying? But statistically speaking, every murder that's happened when they kill a whole bunch of people, those people there don't even have a felony. So the people that's with the felons, they, they don't even kill nobody. But the ones that got the guns with the permits, them the ones that's killing people. Taking them in the school houses and, and yeah. like the, the Vegas situation. Oh, he God. just picking them off. When you said you know that, that's the first thing that popped in my head was Vegas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He just picking them off. No prize. But he was, he, no, no prize, nothing. Wretched to carry a gun, man. Mm. You know, that's just the way that is, man. Yeah. Now, you're going to try to tell me I can't have no gun to protect myself. Come on, man. Try yeah. Getting, yeah, try getting a gun in California. I mean, it's it, it's possible, but it's a process. It's, it's definitely a process. Oh, it, the, the process ain't that long down here. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> the process ain't, ain't, ain't that long at all. You take your few classes and shoot your few things on the range and get you done. That's the way that is. So right now there's someone sitting out there who is thinking about joining the gang is you know one foot in like he's any day now he's gonna he's going down that route you already have been there done that looking back hindsight being 2020 if you could sit down with this kid for one minute what would you tell him i tell him you need to rethink that over man it's that that color once you agree to that color that color stay with you your whole life and it's gonna affect you for the rest of your life so you really have to understand what you're getting yourself into. You may think that it's good and you glorify because you got all your homeboys in there, but you really have to notice and understand what you are getting yourself into. Especially now that, you know, y'all doing what y'all want to do. So now you, you, your OG may tell you because he's two years older than you is or a year older than you is, say, man, go on, knock him off. You don't have to go knock him off. So that's what your OG told you. You believe this. But hey, now Tyler never came back and asked us about nothing. Half of these gang bangers out here right now don't even know they is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now, if you if you sit these if you sit these kids there and show them films in a crash course about what can happen, the death toll and and see all the bodies and everything, they'll never, they'll never do it. They'll be scared of it. Mm -hmm. We weren't scared of it. Mm -hmm. But the kids, these days will be scared of it. I honestly think that. I honestly believe that. They'll be scared of that. And that's how you curb that. You don't block, you don't block the learning process from them. You expose it to them right off the bat. You want to be in the game? This is what's going to happen. This is how you're going to get, you're going to have to do this, you're going to have to do that. Because y'all not taking care of each other no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, damn, man, that's deep. Thank you so much, O-Dog. It's really been a pleasure talking with you. I hope we can do this again. And I know that you're going to at least change one person out there, man. Those, those are some good words if, towards the end. And if I could change at least one person's life, mm -hmm. I'd have done good, man. Amen to that.